right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined all the way from Paris in France, Fabienne Fredrickson. How are you doing, Fabienne? Great to be with you, John. Yeah, and Fabienne has over 20 years experience as the founder of boldheart.com. A mentor to tens and thousands of women business owners and her company has frequently been recognized by the media indeed Inc magazine has named it as one of America's fastest growing private companies for three consecutive years and today what we wanted to talk about is mind shift so how to get out of your own way Par powerful mind shift mindset shifts that produce immediate results so Fabian we often hear people say that you know Oh, you're your own worst enemy or you need to get out of your 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 own way but rarely do people actually understand what that means or are able to articulate it so when you talk about um getting out of your own way what do you mean by that people get in their own way when they say they want to do something or they want to achieve something and when presented with the opportunity to actually make it happen they allow things to get in the way of that and it looks like excuses, resistance, procrastination, uh, starting something and not finishing it, uh, changing your mind, waffling. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it's getting in your own way. You know you're getting in your own way when you say you want something and then you don't actually follow through and make it happen. And this is what we call resistance. Yeah, you know, it's fascinating. Obviously, as human beings, we're, we're hardwired in many ways to procrastinate, to come up with excuses, to find reasons why not, not to do things or not to follow through. So how do you how do you start off on the path of actually overcoming that where it's almost a natural instinct? Well, I, I believe, and, and this is what we teach in our programs, that three things need to match if you want to achieve what you say you want. The first thing is uh, you have to be super clear about what you want. Sometimes people uh, aren't sure what they want. So they say they want something and then they change their mind the next day and they're sending out signals, whether to their subconscious or to the universe, if you're open to that, uh, and they're mixed signals. So of course they don't know where they're going. And if you don't know where you're going, you're not gonna get there anytime soon. So the first way to get out of your own way is to be super clear about what you want to achieve, whether that is a particular number, a particular uh, feeling, uh, a particular status, whatever it is that you want, you need to be clear and write it down and go after that thing uh, day in and day out. And most people aren't clear enough. They're not asking enough. They're not focused enough. And so they just kind of bob along in the water, you know, rudderless, wondering why it isn't happening fast enough. So yeah. it starts with your thoughts and your intention and, and really your clarity of intention. Yeah, and, yeah. And, that's and that's fascinating. So I did, just to say that's fascinating about, about clarity because I do believe that... Uh, uh, when when some people, when they do sit down to do this exercise of clarity, I mean, it's quite liberating, but it's also, it takes, it takes some effort. Uh, it's like anything, if you're going to distill things down and really get focused, it takes effort. And the other part is, it means that you have to, in some ways, remove a lot of things, right? You've got to set aside a lot of things, and, and we don't like doing that as humans. Well, I think especially those of us who are ambitious or mm, high idea generators, we tend to get distracted easily. Uh, we are in a distractible world to begin with, mm -hmm. but when you are wired as somebody who uh, comes up with a new idea every 20 minutes, it's easy to just get off course, and, you know, squirrel, you know, your attention goes and anytime you add something new to your plate, because you get excited, because it's fresh, uh, you delay the completion of everything else on your plate. So most people get to about 60 to 80% completion. 
and they work and they work and they and they wonder why they're not further along, but you, you don't get results from things you don't finish. And so we get in our own way by not finishing what we start by being distracted. So that clarity of intention and also just putting on the blinders and saying, I am going to finish this before I move on to anything else. That is one way to get out of your own way. Yeah, I mean, that's a great point because it's it's very true that we do start a lot of things and then we add things. And so therefore we end up with a lot of things that are in progress, if you like, and very few of them um, uh, getting to fruition. So as part of that, uh, you know, clarity or, or gaining clarity, I mean, how do you help people to f focus in on the thing that's most important and push the others aside? Like, how do you help them make that decision about what is the most important thing and then how to put those blinkers on? Well, I think it's really important to have a, a, a daily constant reminder of what it is that you're going after. And there are many things that can trigger that focus during your day. Uh, within our business programs at Bolt Heart, we understand how everybody is wired, wired for distractibility. So we create systems and structures for accountability so that there's daily accountability via email, there's daily accountability uh, with our members, we have systems so that Every day in every way, you know which three things you're working on with project planners and uh, times where, uh, where we work together to get things done. And when you're in a, a community that is accountability-based, you, pro you produce results that you would never produce on your own. So this is why um, uh, we consider ourselves a, an implementation incubator. Uh, you know, ideas are, um, are you know, a dime a dozen. Uh, mm -hmm. Goals are a dime a dozen. It's, it's not about the person who has the most number of ideas or the most knowledge. It's about the person who can uh, actually finish what they start. And a right. big thing to do that is accountability and, and focus mechanisms. Yeah, and I think that's so incredibly important. I just want to underline that is the, is the part of accountability because it is great when we come up with uh, with great ideas and things that we want to do. But if we're the only ones who are holding ourselves to it, you know, let's face it, we're pretty kind yeah, to ourselves. We're pretty, le yeah. we're pretty lenient. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And here's another thing that gets in the way, John, if I may. So the, the thoughts, uh, the intention has to be aligned with your beliefs, your uh, self-image, the way that you, your psychology, uh, your thoughts are, your, are conscious and you can choose them. But when you go below the surface of the water and onto the realm of the beliefs and the subconscious, this, is actually where your actions come from. Most people think they can will themselves to create results or to achieve something or to, uh, to discipline themselves to do something, but it, it doesn't come from will. Discipline actually comes from the, the, sub, the, the, the subconscious fabric. And I know most people don't talk about this, but they mm -hmm. can discount the subconscious. And when you understand that your habits, that your behaviors, that how you show up in the world, in your business, in, in your, your fitness goals, in your relationships, it always comes down to how you see yourself in, the, in the, the, the theater of your mind. Do you see yourself as being a disciplined person? Do you see yourself as somebody who's already reached that goal? Do you believe that it will happen? Do you believe that you can make that, that amount of money? Do you believe that you can close a sale every day? You know, I am a one call closer. I don't need seven calls. I'm a one call closer. When you have that, that belief system, when you, when on the inside, you expect certain results, certain things in your life, subconsciously, you take actions towards them. You don't need will. Will doesn't happen. Uh, doesn't last for more than you know a couple weeks. It has to be uh, planted 
in the subconscious. And when you have that, most people come up with excuses or procrastination because what they say they want is not aligned with their beliefs about themselves. Yeah. And so one so, of the, the things that we do uh, is, to, is to start with a mindset first methodology before we teach people how to close the sale, before we teach people how to get from five to six figures or six to seven figures, we work on the mindset because otherwise they will not take the action. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, that, that, make, that makes complete sense. And indeed, it's, it's interesting because I think when, when you start to get into this, um, I don't think people realize how many of those um, beliefs that they may have. One of the most interesting ones we come across, I mean, you always think, okay, people have a fear of failure, but there's a lot of people have a fear of success as well. And that holds them back even more because they say they want something, but then they start thinking about the impact it's going to have on their life and the changes that they make. And they invent all of these scenarios. And, and again, it holds them back. So, so um, how do you start to overcome and change those and alter your belief system if it's not serving you? There's many different ways uh, to do so. The, the first one, the, the first way is to understand how a belief or a self-image gets created in the first place. And it is usually through authority, uh, somebody telling you something repeatedly or you witnessing something repeatedly. Uh, the, the, the key is repetition. So uh, you may have heard that uh, the first seven years of life are where as a child, you are a sponge. Uh, when I have three, I have three children. And I remember when my daughter Claire was probably about five, she said, mama is Dora the explorer real? And I said, no, my love, she is a character. And I had to explain what a character sure. was. And then she said, the next sentence, she said, is mama is Oprah Winfrey real? And I said, yes, she is. She lives in Chicago and da, 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 da. And the fact, this really helped me in my mindset work with our clients to understand um, that before the age of seven, uh, children just show, soak up whatever is told to them. So if they've witnessed their parents uh, fight about money, uh, the, you know, for whatever reason, yeah. there will be some friction around money if they uh, heard all their lives that, uh, you know, money doesn't buy you happiness. In fact, uh, more money, more problems, they will have a belief system around money and a self-image of it's holier to be without money. And that, that gets anchored on their subconscious um, before the age of seven, it's called the age of reason after seven, because that's when you start to say, oh, of course, Dora is, an, is, a, is a character right. and Oprah is a person. And so with that repetition, we've created some beliefs, we've created an image about ourselves. Am I enough? Do I deserve a lot? Am I worthy of, and does, you know, all of that. Uh, the way to undo that, there are many ways that, that we do that, but one of the ways is through repetition. Mm -hmm. And just to change who, uh, who you see yourself to be, and then just to con continually repeat that continually repeat that yeah <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's fascinating I, sh I should say it's funny you mentioned Dora I have to say um it was actually my son's first words was Dora ah, so you know. <laughs> yeah it wasn't mom or dad it was Dora um just shows you the power of Dora the Explorer um but but yeah getting back to the the point that you were making there is about these inherited inherited um beliefs that we have and I guess the journey of self-awareness and actually recognizing where your beliefs come from, that's such an important, an important thing to undertake, but it's, it, it's not an easy thing either, is it? I, I, it actually, uh, here's how I look at it. Uh, mm -hmm. If you could have changed your mindsets on your own, you would have already. Yep. Uh, for more than 14 years, I've run a three-day mindset retreat you can go look up mindset retreat and it's a three day process. First, we have to get clear on what you believe about money, what you believe about yourself, what you believe about manifesting a better life, more money, more, more, a better relationship, examine your beliefs and then 
uh, see what's getting in the way, reframe your beliefs, start looking at the fears, the subconscious fears that you have, turn them around, craft a new self image for yourself, not somebody who, you know what, it's like, it's, I don't know why I try this. It never works. Uh, Murphy's law, it's never happening for me versus everything's always working out for me. Everything, you know, I attract, I'm a money magnet. Uh, I, I attract opportunities. I'm a one call closer. When, when you go through a process of examining and reframing and shifting and planting new seeds and creating new neural pathways in the brain, that's when you start taking much different actions uh, as a result. And of course, different actions, different behaviors, different habits create lasting change, lasting results. So most people don't pay attention to this and they try to will themselves to new results and wonder why it's not happening because they're not going underneath the surface to where it's actually happening. Yeah, no, and, and I think that's such an important point and, and, and uh, what you offer there with your, with your mindset program, I think it's so incredibly important because as you said, it's a, it's a difficult thing to try and undertake on your own because in the end of the day, you have adopted and co-opted all of these beliefs often that have come from external sources. So it's hard for you on your own sometimes to, to work through this. So having somebody to help is, I think is a, is a great thing, is a great thing to do. Um, and then you just, um, and what I like about what you said as well is, is that kind of deconstruction and reconstruction. It's almost like saying, okay, a lot of the beliefs that you have about yourself, you inherited them, you co-opted them. They come from other people. Now's the time to create your own. There are so many people who feel uh, consciously or subconsciously that the, the hand that they've been dealt in this lifetime is the hand that they have to play. And I don't believe that. I believe that if you don't like the hand, you know, whether you're playing poker or whatever, you look at your cards, you're like, well, I like these two cards, but I don't like these three cards. Slide them back to the dealer and say, give me three more cards. Mm -hmm. Until, and just continually, you are in control of changing your situation. So many people um, feel that they're helpless and hopeless because of their existing circumstances. But based on your willingness to be bold, right? hence bold heart, uh, your willingness to be bold enough to ask for a, a different set of cards until you get it. Um, it's, it's not the person who, who, who falls down, uh, who, who wins. It's the person who keeps getting back up again and again. Um, that's the secret to life is, is to create life on your own terms. And until you do, um, stop settling, just keep, just keep asking for more, whatever, whatever you want. Yeah. And, and I think one of the points that you mentioned earlier, I think is, is worth bringing back in again, is the fact that we live in this so incredibly distracted world. And I think part of it is that we have to push aside all of these distractions and really, really focus on what's important to us and what we really want to really want to achieve. And again, I think, uh, as you said, you, we got all these beliefs, you know, inherit a lot of them from when you're young. But even today, if you're letting all of these different influences come into your life through all these distracted through media, social media, all of that, again, you are allowing external influences to shape a lot of your beliefs. I, I really deeply believe that everything that you allow into your life, uh, you have to be very careful. Uh, when, when, the, when there's a lot of panic on social media, uh, whether it be uh, the politics or, or COVID or something like that, Whatever is out there, I want you to, that negativity, that vitriol, I want you to imagine that it's a glass of water. And when you consume it, it's as if you were drinking this glass of poison. Mm -hmm. uh, what you allow yourself to take in, whether it's energetically toxic people, uh, news, fake news, whatever, uh, it's as if you were drinking a glass of poison and it's your choice whether you drink that glass or not. You can turn off the Facebook. Uh, you can, you can stop telling people, you know, stop allowing toxic people in your life. 
stop tuning into shows that 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 bring fear uh, and just focus on on really protecting your energy. Don't drink the glass of poison. Yeah, no, I, I have heard of people who have um, switched off their social media and they and they still seem to have a perfect life. Apparently, uh, they do <laughs> it can happen. <laughs> <laughs> it can it can happen but i but i love what you're saying there because i do think that is probably the greatest gift you could give to yourself today is to be aware of what you're letting in the, the poison that you're drinking as that whether that be as we said whether that be um social media or toxic people that you keep around or and things like that is a, these are at the end of the day these are choices you are making they're not being forced upon you you're making those choices you are free to make a decision. Uh, uh, I, I talk about this. I, I wrote a book called Embrace Your Magnificence, Get Out of Your Own Way and Live a Richer, Fuller, More Abundant Life. And part, uh, a big lesson in the book is about raising your standards, whereby I no longer accept. It is not acceptable to do this to me. It is not acceptable to say this to me. It is not acceptable to be late when you are meeting me, et cetera. And when you get clear on the standards that you have for yourself and you raise them, then you can set boundaries with people and you can let them know, you know, actually, uh, no, uh, you're again, 40 minutes late. Uh, uh, I have just decided this is the last time. And, and if you continue to, to do that just one more time we will not be friends again there there is an absolute way that you choose you're in control of how the world reacts to you you are not in reaction to the world the world reacts to you and how high your standard standards are and how firm your boundaries are and that's how you create a life that you love yeah, I love that. That's fantastic, Fabian. A great place to to finish today. I, just, I love what you just said there. I mean, I really would just triple underline it. I'm not even going to try and paraphrase it because you said it so beautifully. Um, <laughs> Okay, um, before we go, all of Fabian's information is going to be below this uh, video and we'll have the book and everything there as well. But before we go, please do take a moment, tell people a little bit more about yourself and what you do. I am a coach. I have been for more than 20 years. Uh, to business owners who want to get from five figures to six and then from six to seven figures with their life back. Uh, you can find out more and watch a mini documentary at boldheart.com. And I am also launching the Fabian.com brand to uh, help women across the globe to uh, have it all, whatever all means to them and to no longer settle for anything less than absolutely everything. Yeah, perfect. I love it. Thanks so much, uh, Fabian, for, for talking with us today. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine Pipeliner CRM. I will see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.